Theme song. <laughs> theme song. For when my kids are Theme song. All right. No. I don't know. What was it? It's a theme song. I liked it. Sure. It's that song. What? Freak out. Isn't that what they say? Aw, freak out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, welcome to When Wife Gives You Lemon Dish. Hi. So, uh, let's see. I'll start with, um, it's, it was a, a busy, long, fast, short, long weekend. <laughs> well, it was because, so, so Christmas we bought Caleb tickets to go to the last final no effect show in San Pedro. It was three days. So it was like a three day punk rock festival, a bunch of bands is out of control. Um, of course he needed a chaperone to go with him. So of course I went with him. John um, had the best Christmas last I Christmas. I really did, because my kids needed so You got to go see them. racing. You got Christmas is the best for me. <laughs> um, I'm a spoiled baby. So anyway, so, and we stayed on the Queen Mary for the weekend. So, you know, we didn't see any ghosts, though. But you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, but you did hear people screaming, because they had, like, the mazes and That's stuff. right. That's right. It was right outside amazing. our window. Like, you, you it's open amazing. Up, you'd open our portal. It wasn't even a window. They opened the portal. And it's funny, because there's no bars or anything on the window, so if you fell out, you'd just go in the water anyway. They're like, what are you going to do, suicide into the water, dummy? <laughs> right? Ugh, that so, freaks me out. But you can't fall very far. It doesn't matter. Good day. It scares me. Anyway, so uh, we got there Friday morning, and by, like, we got there at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, kind of cruised in, took our time, got the souvenir run the first day that we didn't have to, and of course I had, because I was the one that had to carry everything. Mm -hmm. For for me, Jamie, <laughs> for everybody, I was the bitch. You're the dad. Mm-hmm. You're the consummate so, dad. So I was, so I dadded, and I held everything for the first night, but I told him, I was like, I'm doing this the first night, so I don't have to do the shit that any, any more of the rest of the weekend. So, so we, so we got down into the pit area and there's, there's two stages. So they got one stage going and this one stage is kind of warming up and getting ready. And there's people kind of mingering, me, meandering, mingering. mingering. I like mingering, <laughs> meandering around or meandering, right? There's a little crowd. I'm, on, I'm mingering. And, and there's this really, really drunk guy. Uh -huh. Like he's. I mean, he's fucking hammered. He can barely stand himself, and he's just, you can just tell he's just annoying drunk. And he keeps pushing into this big, giant, like, bearded, biker-looking dude who's kind of up at the front row kind of thing. And there's, you know, there's only, like, it's, it's open. There's not a lot of people in the area right now. So, and he keeps, like, falling into this dude. And finally, the dude's like, dude, what the fuck, man? Right? And he kind of just, like, pushes him away from him. Well, the dude's all drunk, and he falls down, and he cracks his head on the freaking asphalt so hard. And my friend Dennis was looking away, and I go, oh, my God. He goes, what was that? And I go, that dude, that was that dude's head that hit the ground. So, and then the guy's, of course, talking shit to this biker dude, and the biker dude's just like, dude, just go away. Just, and, you know, because you can just tell the guy's like, dude, I don't want to hurt you. Go away. So, finally, the drunk guy moves over, and he's still kind of talking shit trying to talk shit to the big guy and he's me meandering into the crowd this other part of the crowd mm -hmm. and then i don't know if he fell into a girl or something but this girl pushed him and he fell down again and hit his head again bam same way but just as hard but this time now his head is split open he's bleeding all over the place and he's like still trying to stand there like no i'm good i'm good and people, dude i'm like oh my god this guy's so concussed finally two people talked him into going to the medic tent because they had a medic tent of course they do. So, and then your child mm -hmm. was gone. Okay. I, I, he, he'd hang out. We hung out with me for a while, and then he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I really want to go check this band out." And then I was like, <laughs> "I'd see, it, the first time I saw him, he looked like a a lost kid that had come out of a river. <laughs> he was so sweaty and wet. Like he came out after a band. He was like, <laughs> I'm a." Need some water, dude? So finally, I, you know, we, the rest of the weekend, we had him a bottle set up. So anyway, so he, he comes running out and he'd go back in and he'd run out and he'd go back in. 
and during the Dropkick Murphys, then they were wild. Dropkick Murphys were awesome. If you ever get a chance to see them, they're fucking rad, right? Anyway, <clears throat> so so they were they were. I mean, that place was going bananas, and somebody got hurt. Of course, I'm on the outside, and I was talking to J- Uncle Jamie and Dennis, and I'm like, I need to go look. I, I need to just make sure it's not mine, <laughs> right? You just, you, you know, you dad, you just automatically, I gotta go look. <laughs> so I wander over, and uh, I kind of wander, meander around the pit, meander. Mingry. I like this, like I said. I like mingering. Like so. so I'm mingering around, <clears throat> and then, so I, I okay, it's not, it, I see, I realize, okay, it's not not mine and I start walking away they start right you now they start going again it's not even two minutes boom they stop somebody got hurt again they're like damn it even the band's like what the fuck right like you fucking you guys are pussies right <laughs> I'm like of course this one's definitely gonna be mine right so I'm like okay I'm waiting so I was I was walking away from the medical area I walked back and <laughs> I just I'm standing there and then they're getting ready to restart. They hadn't re- quite restarted yet, and they were getting ready to. And here I see Caleb come wandering out of the pit, and he's got blood running down his face. And I'm like, and he must have saw my face, like, what the fuck? And he goes, don't worry, Dad, it wasn't me. <laughs> he goes, here, and he hands me a tooth. And then he goes, huh, it wasn't me. And then he ran off right back in the middle again, and I didn't see him again until the end of the night, pretty much. We had a meeting spot. And, that's, and we would meet him there every night. That's where we'd end up. He just so, had, you know, this kid had the time of So that life. was the first night. That was just the first night. So then we, you know, we got back and we... I'm slouching. I'm sorry, guys. I'm we, tired. I know. We slept it off. And then the next day, we got breakfast. And we went back over there. Wandering, of course. Mingry. Of course, you know, the first day we got there... I found a parking spot, and as we started to get out, and I saw the traffic. I have the special skill, for those of you who don't know, I have a really, really rare special skill that allows me in and out of parking lots like a fucking motherfucker. Any event. I don't you know, know what's what it is. funny is we were me, every once in a while it doesn't happen, but but I my my odds are very high. You know what's funny is I was talking to someone about this, and she's like, I have a weird special skill where I can look at any thought <clears throat> or any leftover and know exactly what container. And she goes, and my husband, every time he doubts me, like that's too small, that's too big. And she's like, have you not learned to trust me yet? And I go, that's funny. John has one where he can get out of packed parking spots. And I go, I have one where if I need, like, ten sheets of paper or any, like, amount, I will normally, for, like, 97%, grab the exact amount of shit that I need. So... So this is so I so we start to pull out and I've kind of I've kind of pull into this little line and it's kind of trafficy and I'm looking at it and it's all stalled up and I'm looking and I watch this car behind me, I'm looking and I go, oh, is there, there's tail lights behind me, how can I get there? And I'm watching and I'm looking in my mirror and I go, you know what? I'm gonna try something and I throw it in reverse and I turn around and I find there's this little tiny road and it turns right into this line and it's where the people pick up and drop off a ride share. So I drove right to the end, turned left, and I was gone. I was gone. So the rest of the weekend, I set myself up to park near these spots, right, uh-huh. so I could do this. And the last day, they tried to make me park up front, and I, I, I went, I parked, and then I went over and talked to the security guys and the parking guys, and I go, listen, I want to tell you what my plan is. Okay. So I, ex- no, I, I explained to them what uh-huh. my plan was, and I handed them $20, and I said, this will buy you guys eat your beer. I go, I want to park right here. And they go, okay. <laughs> they're like, okay. But it was once I explained to them. They're like, oh, that's cool. I haven't even noticed that all weekend. I go, I know. Nobody has. And that's why I keep taking it. So anyway, it worked out awesome. I saw a couple people take it after me. But anyway, so that was cool. That move. Anyway, that was first night. Second night we got there. Uh, what exciting happened in the second day? I uh, ran into a good friend of mine, Brandon, and, and my friend Scott, a scooter. We used to call him Scooter. Scooter. You and Brandon have matching tattoos. Yeah, Brand. Well, we have we have not even matching, not even a close. Anyway, so so got to see Brandon and Scott, which was pretty cool to see those guys because I I haven't seen those guys in a long time. We got to hang out for a while. I went down to the pit with, or I went down to the front with them during Descendants and bounced around, and then I went back to the pit. 
and then I found Caleb, and I jumped on his back, mm. and then I started pitting around with him, and, and then the song ended, and he was, and he gave me a big old hug, like he big, a big old hug, I was like, oh, my little baby boy, he's my little a, giant baby boy. He's mad, this child right. is But it was cool, massive. I, I gotta be honest, it was probably, it was probably one of my favorite moments with any of my kids, honestly, it really was, it was such a cool little moment. I will so, say your oldest was so jealous. Well, he should be. Because he came to... But you know what? They sing about anti-God stuff, too, so... He came and changed his brakes because they're in Arizona. I need to call and make sure they got there he safe. He texted me. Okay, good. And um, he's like, where's, where's Dad? Where's Dad? Because he's changing brakes. Where's Dad? Because you know, Dad changed his brakes. And I was like, oh, it's Caleb's Christmas present. And he's like, oh, they're going to go get a car. And I go, no. They're... No effects I go, it's no effects for him. And he's all, oh, yeah. And you just see him like... Dude, it was awesome though. That, that and so I got it was cool. I got the, so the, the Descendants were fucking awesome. By the way, if you don't know the Descendants, they're really cool. They're an awesome band. It was cool to see them live. Anyway, so they they rocked out, and then I rocked out a little bit with Caleb, and then I got out and hung out with the boys the rest of the night. And then uh, No Effects came out and did their second night. Their first night they did a bunch of songs. They were like, yeah, these are just the worst ones of the weekend. We're gonna get better through them the weekend. And uh, they played some great songs, so it was a great set. Second night was awesome. You know, they played good. Third night was hard. So, okay, so third night. <clears throat> so the, the show was great. I lost Caleb. He, it was like, I think the subhumans are getting ready to come on, Dad. I'm going to go. Bye. So he was out in the subhumans pit. I, did. I Honestly, I don't think I saw Caleb maybe twice. I saw him eating, and I sat down and talked to him for a while. Did he have money? Yeah, he bought his own food sometimes. I gave him 40 bucks at one point, but he was buying his own stuff when he needed to. Oh, that's right. He works. Kind of. So anyway, <laughs> so Pennywise was fucking rad. Um, all the bands were kick-ass. No Effects came on, start their last set, which was... And every night they started their set with fucking uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Transvestite song. Why can't I think of the song? Name Sweet Transvestite? Yes. Yeah. So every night I've seen Jay Farrow. So though. every night they started with that, the, but they didn't play it like it was playing over, uh -huh. and then they'd come out and just start right. So then they get started and they do their show. Oh, and I forgot there was there was a moment in the second night where so my favorite one of my favorite bands on the planet was No Use for a Name, um, and and the lead singer died a bunch of years ago. So anyway. He has a song that he po he's it's called I'm So Sorry, I'm um, Sorry Tony or whatever and it's it's you know, kind of about like losing your best buddy and not really kind of really being there for him in the right way at the end. So I, mean, I kinda always felt that way with Daryl Pass. Mm -hmm. And so that song really hits me hard, right? Not only is it like a band I love, it's like fuck or so I get a little I, I just kinda hit out in the back a little bit emotional, like by myself, right? So I got you through that and it, I was like, That's stupid, right? So the next day that was you happy two. and pissed? I wasn't very happy and pissed. I was sad and pissed. <laughs> so the next day, so day three, so day three we wake up and we go through, we go through the day, you know, right? And the show's going and I know that they are ending with The Decline, which is like their masterpiece song. It's an 18 minute jam and it's like, it's, it's just badass. So anyway, I know they're going to do it and like, I swear to God, like, as soon as soon as the first note hits, there's, you know, lines of like fifty year old punk rock dudes hugging and <laughs> like oh. cheering up through the song, right? Like nobody could even really like they rocked it out, you know. It was great, but like by the end of it, I mean, people were hugging each other. I mean, like it was like every, and I'll be honest, like for me, it was super. Like I, I definitely, I'm not gonna lie, I definitely cheered up cheered up because it it's like part of me died i get that like part of me died that night and it, and it just sucks because i just and i knew it right so you're like so it just hurt uh -huh. right so anyway i felt like i was mourning a friend so even even now like i still feel like i'm kind of mourning that friend right, right. i lost because it was like their music meant a lot to me uh -huh. in my younger years i mean that's 30 years of listening to them. They're a 40 year band. I've been listening to them for like 32 of those. So, so it was really, it was very emotional, very tough. Even, you know, me and Dennis were like, 
<laughs> yeah. You know, it was, it was, uh, and then afterwards, you know, it was, you know, like Mike came down, he was like hugging the crowd, he was Aww. hugging everybody, that everybody was crying, like, it was crazy, like, I was like, this is bananas, who would have fucking thought like this punk rock band has got people like crying, right? Right. I mean, like, I, I can still get emotional right now, like it hurt, like it was just, there was so much emotion in it, so... It was cool because the last song, like, Pennywise was out there. They were all out there playing guitars and singing with them to finish the song. So it was, like, all these bands that were been there through Thick and Thin, Bad Religion. Mm. Like, they were all there, like, cheering Goldfinger. And and so they were all, you know, they're singing and bouncing off. And then Fletcher, the lead, the guitarist for Pennywise, grabbed a hold of them. this guy, Mike. I can't remember his last name. He's a singer of M- MXPX, who's a very good. If you guys don't know who MXP is, because they're really good. Um, and he grabbed his bass and he just started smashing it to pieces on the stage like a rock star. Put your, put your pot. So it was really funny. Put your pot. Damn it, dog. So yeah, so uh, so then we saw okay. saw him smashing stuff, and then <clears throat> we kind of hung out and man- meandered. Mingled. Mingered. Mingering. We ma- we mingered around a little bit, you know, at the end, and just kind of hung out and watched and kind of like dealt with it and kind of soaked it in and and okay, so they have an album that's called So Long and Thanks for All the Shoes, right? Uh huh. So they had this in the the al- the the album covers like Neapolitan. It's like you know chocolate. Uh-huh. And you've seen that cover, yeah, I'm sure. Uh-huh. So they had this gigantic carpet. I mean, this carpet was. Fucking fucking massive right massive and and they had this like kind of like stage thing you know set up but it said uh so by before the end of the weekend everybody started throwing their shoes up over it like so long and thanks for all the shoes so everybody's throwing their shoes up over it there's like 30 pairs of shoes hanging off the top of that thing when we left oh it was it was it was cool it was it was cool and it's funny because now I, like i'm seeing a lot of posts from it you know now people are like some people are like, it was emotional for me. It's like part of me died that night. And then other people are like, you guys are fucking pathetic. <laughs> it's a fucking bad. They'll be back together in three years. And I'm like, dude, this is where I, this is how I know they are not real no effects fans. Because the real ones know. They're done. They're done, dude. They're, they're done. They're almost, they're all pushing 60 years old. They're all doing fine. They've all made good livings. They all, if, if they want to start new projects, they're going to have great followings. No matter what they do, so I well, just well, that Mike's got the well, he's now. I mean, he, well, he's got all sorts of shit. He's got a real estate license and all sorts. Like he's really a smart guy, right? And but you know, and and Hefe, you know, he's he does a lot of acting. He was doing acting in that Mayan show for a while too, as well. He's the other guitarist. Uh huh. And then uh-huh. Melvin, he's just a musician. He's a badass musician. So he, yeah, I think he has his own project. And I don't know what Smelly's doing, the drummer. I mean, but. They all seem to have, you know, gotten enough to... If, if they needed work, somebody would hire them in a heartbeat. Right. But it was funny, though. I heard F.A. say something to... He goes, what? Goldfinger's here? <laughs> like, he said something. He's like, what? Goldfinger's here? He goes, uh, I'm free after tonight. <laughs> he goes, as a matter of fact, I'm free after the song. <laughs> and it's funny because today, <laughs> some, like, super punk group just jumped out today, and he's going to be a guitar in it. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's like three days later. I was like, oh, shit. Um, so, anyway. So Britton and Gina have a friend. They call him Wheelchair Russ. I think his Instagram is Russ on Wheels. And he was backstage, and he live-streamed a lot of it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, John and Kayla were there. And he's like, oh, shit, Russ, Wheelchair Russ was there. That's cool. So, okay, so I got the fall-down guy. I never talked, and I talked about all the old guys crying. Mm-hmm. Um, Lady Gas. Oh, that was funny. Um, so, okay, so I have no effects drives in the pit, so I thought it was really funny, and it reminded me, of, it reminded me of, um, we watched, there's a movie, uh-huh, and, oh, Role Models, Role so models. in the movie, yeah, 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 right, so in the movie Role Models, when they're doing the LARPing, Go. and they're all in the LARPing contest or whatever, uh-huh. and at the end of the LARPing contest, and the guy's like, he's all, oh, wait, we're going too hard, and he goes, hey, you're really good, this is really fun, right, and he's like, yeah, come back, check it out with us again, right, uh-huh, so, I see these giant dudes, these gigantic men with like these 
spiked hair, like spike <gasps> spike pieces everywhere. Uh-huh. Like they cut their hair for the show for this, right? Like right. mohawks and just like spikes everywhere and shit. And like you see them and they're like, Hey man, it was really great. It was like really great pin with you, man. Good job, man. It's great meeting you, man. Uh-huh. You like, you know, it's like they were going back to business. They're like, All right, man, see you later, bro. That's how I feel Caleb was. And you know Caleb made friends. Oh, he made friends everywhere. Everybody knew him. Everybody <laughs> in the pit knew him. I, yeah. Like like my friend, like Brandon and Scott knew he was in their pit and they'd met him on the outside. So they saw him in there and they, you know, they'd go and bang into him a little bit and, you know, talk some smack and play with him a little bit. And so like he, it was cool. It was he's a lot a, of fun. He's a fucking cool kid. Yeah. So, so they did that and they had the shoes and then the, uh, the dude fell down and then the Mohawk and the nice guys and the giants in the pit. Oh, and there was a bondage lady. Thank you. I've been waiting for you to tell me about this. So. Because Maddie posted a picture right. of it. I just, I just didn't understand why. Okay, so she had her little tent set up. Mm-hmm. She had her little. It's bondage massage. Yeah, she had her little thing set up, and if you wanted to get flogged, she'll flog you. She, but you're paying her to do all this stuff. Uh-huh. With, in, in front of everybody right there, and I was, I was, who the fuck's like? I'm going to no affection. Dude, I think I'm going to get fucking flogged right now. So the tr- it's not that they think that. They get there and they see it and they're like, like that's Poof. available. That's awesome. And, she's, and she was beautiful. Like the so picture, she I was thought pretty. It was, I thought it was funny. I, I thought it was super funny, like silly. I would totally tie people up and stick my ass. I was telling somebody about it today. Yeah, and you're so, like, I'll stick my finger in your ass. <laughs> if you let me, I would. Like, if you gave me permission. You don't. Okay, so. But, um... Yeah, I would tie people up and, like, stick my elbows in them. I mean, I know the pressure points. It's not like I would hurt them. I would actually feel good. But I watched good. her, like, lay him down on the thing, like, tie his hands up and, like, sm- like start giving him a little psh, psh, psh. See, that's not massage. I would massage. Oh, no, but that's what she was doing. She was, like, dominatrixing a little bit. It was more like that, less massage. It wasn't really massage. See, I want to mass- I would tie them but up. But it was, like, bondage. She was, like, bondaging. Right. Yeah, I would tie them up and then stick my elbows in them. Oh, no, yeah. She was, like, flogging them. See, so her and I would have two different setups. It's yeah. fine. So, so, so that was, I thought that was buck wild to or think, like, who's at the, who's there? And, and like, the dudes I see on there, like, oh, who's up on our Come on, bro! Amazing. <laughs> They're like, what band are you playing? I'm only here to see, I'm only here to see somebody else. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, uh, so there was that, and then, the thing I had about the gas was watching this lady in her car. This was this was yesterday, I think. But she was in her car at the gas station, and she was on the wrong side, right? So she she tried to stretch it, and she couldn't get it stretched. And, like, she kept trying, and she kept trying, and she couldn't figure out how to get it stretched to the wrong side of the car. Uh-huh. And then she starts looking like, well, shit, i got to do something. So she's staring at the thing. She's staring at the pump. She's staring at that. And she doesn't want to put the pump back. So she lays the pump on the ground. <laughs> and then gets in her car and turns around and then comes back. I was like, man, if the fumes were coming out of that thing at that moment, it would have been like a ba-boom. It would have been awesome. A ba-ba-boom. It would have been awesome. I was like, it's awesome. Check it out, Brody. Check it out. Well, also, let me just tell you. Um, you called me at one point and you're like, yeah, this guy Frank Turner's on stage and it's, he's pretty cool. He doesn't really fit, but it's really cool. I like him. But here's the thing. You told Months me before, I was massaging the guy who I massaged today and um, told you, hey, there's a, this guy told me about this guy Frank Turner. And I actually sent you the link. a link for you to that check I him never, out. That I never listened to. Apparently. But I was like, I told you about him. Well, thanks for telling me about him. He's pretty awesome. Also, I figured out something today, and I almost don't want to tell you. Um, I, there's another song I've been singing really, really incorrectly. Oh, please do. It's bad, though. Please. Did you know it's my boyfriend's back? And you're going to get in trouble? Yeah. Okay. You didn't. I've been singing that song wrong. You, you did not. For. You did not. The longest time, John. <laughs> My boyfriend. <laughs> and you're going to get in trouble. Hey you, now. Hey let me guess now, where you learned. Let me, l- let me guess where you learned those lyrics from. No one. That's what I thought it said. 
somebody like... And nobody corrected me, ever. Because they laughed at you. Probably. I always thought it was a really messed up song. You're like, Jesus, this song is racist. It is, cause, and even they do the, hey now, hey now, my boyfriend's back. With an L. Uh-huh. You can say the word black, it's okay. Yeah, but not in that song. I never sing that song because of that. And then somebody started, like, my boyfriend, and they were like, back, he's back, and I was all... I was in the other room, and somebody was talking out. It wasn't even the same conversation, and my face went. Oh, I better not tell anybody, but you just told all seven people. And then I Googled it, because I was like. And you found out? That I was wrong. Good times. I'm 43 years old, and I have been singing it wrong. I wanted. I wish I could have heard you sing it. That would have been amazing. And then, so let me tell you about my weekend. Well, John and Caleb are having the fucking time of their lives. It was amazing. Brody's been, Brody was sick all last week. Like, he, I think he only went to school one day. And so, on Friday, he's like, Mom, I'm so sick. I'm so sick. And he was supposed to go to practice. And I was like, okay. So, I take him to urgent care in the morning. And they swab his throat for strep throat but he's tongue tied so it's really hard for him to put his tongue down and I told the lady that I'm like you're going to have to use a tongue dep- dispre- depressor thank you dispressor and she was like Ugh. I was like okay <laughs> really does she have like some severe something yeah type? yeah she was, her boyfriend came my back. name is nice <laughs> so anyway they came back they're like the strep throat is negative and the guy's like oh he has hand foot and mouth and I'm all like he's that's a child. Right. That's why we were like, what the fuck? So I called John, and Brody is just crying, because one, he, they told him he couldn't play on Saturday. He couldn't play his football game. And he couldn't go to practice, and he was just, he was hurting. So they're like, just take Motrin. And I'm like, okay. So we get him home. He cries all night. I'm up all night with him. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I go to work on Saturday. I knock him the fuck out. I give him drugs, knock him out. And then I go to work, and I come back, and he's, like, it's awful, it's awful. And I was like, fucking man up. Like, I feel bad. But I was like, fucking come on. So then finally at like 7.30, he's like, Mom, it's so bad. And he's crying. And you called me while he was crying. And I was like so overwhelmed. And the whole weekend I was like, I want John to have fun. Like, I want John, I don't want to ruin this. Because I always ruin shit. And I was like, I'm not going to ruin this. And then you called and I just shouldn't have answered the phone. But I was so overwhelmed and it was right when you got out of the pits with Caleb and you're like it was the best time and I'm like ah, I hate you right now so and you're like just take him to the ER just take him to the ER by the way Kaiser is um contracted with Henry Mayo so we don't have to drive to Panorama by the way oh that's cool yeah so anyway I don't trust H- Henry but, Mayo, but I drove him back to urgent care because they said it closed at 8 30 I'm fucking exhausted So we go in, and I'm like, it's getting worse. I don't know what to do. Like, I hope he's not being a little bitch. Like, it's, and she's like, okay. And she's like, I'm going to swab his throat. And I was like, he's tongue-tied. And she goes, okay. And she fucking stuck that swab in his throat and gagged him. Like, I know for a fact. And she's all, if it's not strep throat, she's like, we're going to have to test him for mono. Because he's, he's sick. And I was like, okay. Cool. Cool. They lost 34 to 0 in their game. He, it was just awful. So she finally, come, and I'm like dying and he's crying. And then he go, she goes, he's positive for strep throat. And I was like, okay. So they gave, him, the they, the gave him, they gave him steroids because it was so swollen and so red and so bad. And then she's like, okay, in 24 hours, you the antibiotics will make you start feeling better. And he goes, and he could barely talk. He's like whispering. He goes, so if you would have diagnosed me with strep throat yesterday and given me the antibiotics yesterday, I'd already be feeling better right now. And she goes, yeah. And he goes, okay. He was pissed. And he, so, she knew she was like, did this 13 year old just call me a <laughs> Also, sure also I mean, he's almost 14. Um, they reminded me. So we go, and then they were giving him a lidocaine mouthwash, but they're like, oh, we can't ha- make that tonight. It's too late. You'll have to come back. And I was like, fine. So we take the antibiotics. 
he gets in bed with me and he refuses to swallow so every like 10 minutes he's getting up and sitting in the bathroom and I am like dead on my feet dead ass exhausted and then I got maybe an hour of sleep and then I went to work and everybody's all you look bad you're like she thinks like I'm so tired to the point I almost canceled someone and took a nap on my massage table I almost did because I was like I'm like he's not home he's not here so I get home and he's fine he's like I'm not feeling any better and I'm like yes you are because his voice was coming back and then finally because he can swallow I gave him Benadryl because I was like fucking go to bed and then I knocked ass out and then all it you came in the bedroom and I must have been in like a weird twilight because you scared the yeah, fuck out right. of me when because I was all <laughs> it was just I was so tired so that so there was this moment when we were walking in on Saturday and was we got there since we got there like a little afternoon so we're, we're rolling in and there's a line right there's this line and it goes fucking forever it's from the from the main gate and, and, but there's like 10 wide right but somewhere along the line somebody said beside there's a line and now this line is going almost to the parking lot where we're parked which is almost like a, like over a quarter mile away so we're walking over like fuck a fucking line and, and Dennis and Jay are like fucking line and I, I look at Caleb and I look and I go there's people parked on the other side they gotta go and they're just fucking walking I go fuck this and I walk across the street and Caleb goes I'm going with you dad and we go across <laughs> we're inside hey man where are you guys at <laughs> you guys might want to cross the street dude we've been in here for 10 minutes nice so they finally took my advice and went. So the next day, everybody was lined up on the other side. So we stayed on this side and walked in. So tell them that you stayed on the Queen Mary. And Queen Mary's also doing scare nights right now. Yeah, they are. So they got to hear like people screaming for right. being scared. And it I think fun. that's amazing. It was fun. It was actually all night long. They went to one in the morning. So it was loud and oh, it had music. Oh, and I would have been laughing. It was. You know what? We kept like poking or like open up. And you could see the line for the, the maze that's on the ship that they have which uh -huh. is probably terrifying uh-huh but oops. okay so something else i noticed on this ship they have a couple of restaurants like a couple of nice restaurants on either side of the ship right one's called winston's so named after winston churchill who he had visited the ship blah 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 and then the other side was uh churchill like the royal something or other right so there's two rest two fancy restaurants and I, I was looking at the menu because I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, what would I get here? So I'm looking at the menu. Chicken tenders. <laughs> Chicken tenders, $35. No, I was like, steak, you know. like It was like, good. Uh -huh. Yeah, I left you hanging. Thanks. Sorry about that. So then I'm looking at the other side of my, oh, what is this restaurant rocking? Same thing. That's fucking hilarious. Same price. That's hilarious. Same thing. Like, the menu is exactly the same, just a different name on it. Like, you wouldn't know, though, right? That's Unless you so did both. Funny. And then there's like a cafe or something up front, but I, I never got a chance to go check that one out. And then... Then I was given history lessons, because that's what I do. <laughs> and then last night... Was it last night? What's today? Thursday. Tuesday night, I did comedy at the Bowling Alley, Santa Clarita Lane. And I get there, and the lady's like, did you bring, did you bring people? And I was like, I tried. I go, I think I've got like three You're people like, coming. I, I didn't know it was a bringer show. Right. And she was like, well, you know, I wanted a local person because I was hoping you'd bring talent or um, people. And I was like, okay. Oh, so you just thought I'd say so you just using me for bringing people. Kind of. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm out. And there wasn't a lot of people there, but whatever. And then I was sitting there and Jamie, your sister, my sister-in-law was supposed to come. And I was like, where are you, dude? Because I knew she'd be late. But I was like, dude, where are you? And she's like, it starts at 8. And I go, it starts at 7 on the 8th. And she's like, oh, shit. And she's like, truly, like, three blocks away from the bowling alley. So I'm sitting she's there. Late. I'm sitting there. And I was like, shit. And then Tyler walks in. And I was all. Hi, our son again. I'm two like, times. what the fuck, dude? And he's like, do you have to pay full price to get in if you know a performer? And I go, did they make you pay full price? He's like, yeah, I go, let me buy you a drink. So I bought him a drink, and he's sitting with me. And then your sister's texting me, and I'm doing something. So he just grabs my phone and starts texting her. And I was like, all right, whatever, I don't care. I was like, you can fucking... I go, Brody commandeers my phone. I go, I make Brody 
answer my phone all the time. Hilarious. I go and I'll give my I go I'll give my phone to dad and I'm like as long as you guys don't screw up my massage appointments, I don't care. I go, you're not going to see anything, whatever. Right. I go, you might see a couple of married comedians that shouldn't be trying to slide into my DMs, but... It's funny. Fucking, I don't care. I'm not going to do anything, because... First of all, why would I fuck around with a married comedian? Anyway, so anyway, sorry, I digress. So anyways, Tyler comes in, and we're talking, and I was like, how are you, blah, 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 and you know, he's like, oh, your birthday's on Sunday, I was like, let me buy you a drink. And he's like, yeah, we're going to go see Nana and Pop. And I was like, fucking cool. And then... Yeah, he both did for Arizona. I forgot his birthday's coming up. Holy shit. Sunday. He's going to be 24 Jesus. on Sunday in like two days, three days. So anyway, what she if does this... I wonder if he's going to Arizona to see his mom. I don't I just thought about that just now. I bet he is. Anyway, go ahead. Oh. Anyway, um... I did talk about him. Um, anyway, so... Um... So she has this thing, this, like, pre-recorded, like, welcome to the world-famous Santa Clarita Lane, historical Santa Clarita Lanes and Saugus, you know, blah, 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 right. right, and it's all, and, you know, we give, it also, the money proceeds, some of it goes to charity for autistic people for opportunity. And, of course, as a comedian, I'm like, well, I go, there's two people above me, if they don't use it, I'm using it. Right. Sure enough, nobody uses it, right? And then the guy who was directly in front of me, he didn't read the room very well because it was just a bunch of old-ass white people. There was only, like, 25 people there at most, maybe. And they're old, like, old and crotchety. And I was like, oh. And he's saying the N-word, which they probably liked, and um, called them Karens a bunch. And, and Tyler goes, hey, Joy. I go, what? And he goes, you got to follow this guy. And I was like, uh-huh. And you just watch the energy just... Which, whatever, you, you're not allowed to blame the crowd. Like, seriously, it is a comedian's job to make you... To find out what they think is funny and keep on it. That's your job. That's your job. So I get on and I go, hey, Pam. I go, thanks for letting me on stage. Um, am I boring you? Yeah. I go, thanks for letting me on stage. I go, first I thought, you know, we were friends and you were just giving me stage time. But now I'm just wondering if I'm just one of those autistic opportunities. And... Nobody laughed, and I was like, okay. So I went all through. I, I would get them laughing, and I was like, okay, they like these types of jokes. And then I'd start with that vein, and then I'd lose them. So then I'd tell a couple jokes. I'd get them laughing at another point, and I was like, okay, they like these now. And then they stop. And I was like, god damn. There's a bald dude on the right that laughed at everything I said, him and his wife. And I was like, I fucking like you. And then there was this older lady, and she just looked miserable. And I was like, hey. She's like, what? And I go. You know, I put my butt plug in the fridge for my hemorrhoids, and I go, write that down. You'll need that later. And ev that made people laugh. She did not laugh. Her table did not laugh. <laughs> and then so Jamie got there, and then, so we're sitting there. Oh, and I go, I go, my oldest son, I was like, he's in forestry. I was like, yes, I raised a hero. You're welcome. And I was like, he just got married to his first wife. And nobody laughed. They all went. And one guy goes, ooh. And Tyler's laughing, and I was like, oh, my God. And I go, it's not like she's here. But then later, Aubrey did come, and I was like, dude, next time I'm doing, I go, next time you guys are in the audience, I'm fucking doing that joke, and I'm pointing at you. And she's like, okay. Right. Because <laughs> I was like, right. she's like, I would have laughed. I was like, Phew. and then I was like, and then Tyler's like, well, he goes, I feel like you kind of got the most laughs of the night, which is saying something. And John Campanelli was there. Oh. And he goes. Man, you guys are a great crowd, and I fucking laughed so hard. And then, so, everything's over, everything's gone, and then Jamie, Tyler, me, and Aubrey just, we closed the bar down. We right. were there till midnight. That's cool. They turned the lights on us. We were just talking, we were telling stories. You know, I told Tyler how he got me in trouble with Nana, because for, I go, for like a year, you called me Step. You, know, you were like 10, and you called me Step for like a year. You remember that? Yeah. I do. And then one day I got so frustrated and I turned around and I called him Step Back. And he started crying. And he ran up like a little bitch to Nana's house. And like three minutes later, my phone's ringing. Joy, you can't do... I was like, he's been calling me Step for like a year. And it hurts my... You're the adult. And I was all... And he's laughing. He goes, I remember that. And I was like, you're such an little asshole. Twat. A little twat. 
And I told him that. half information given by the fucking... And then I was like, yeah. And I go, when I first moved in, I was playing your dad's Yahtzee game outside of the bathroom. He's like, that's my dad's pooping game. You're gross. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he hated you. He was so In the mean. very beginning, he hated you. Then he liked you. And then his mom made you hate, made him hate you. Yes. And then he hated you until he was like 20. Yeah. And now he, and then he started kind of liking you. And now he likes you. Yeah. But it was, it was, we were just telling jokes and it, or just talking. And then I told him about how Brody, when I took him for Cowboy Day, and he was all, I look so fucking stupid. I look so stupid. <laughs> That's so funny. And then, yeah, so that was Tuesday night. And then last night, I've been in a book slump. I know you guys don't care, but I really, really love reading a lot. And when you can't find a book to read, it is so horrible. And I found a book last night, and I read till like, 1 o'clock in the morning, and I am fucked. And I still have, like, 3,000 more steps. So. I feel like I rode that that festival high until, like, yesterday. Like, last night, it finally started. I feel like I started coming off of that high. You know what I mean? The adrenaline mm-hmm. high. So, now I feel normal. Nice. Yeah. I guess that's it. <laughs> I just stared at you for way too long. All right, um, lick my clit surprise. You lick her clit, you'll get a surprise. What's the surprise? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Try it. I will. I'll be okay. happy to. Like, lick, lick, click, subscribe. Thanks for listening. Check us out. Tell your friends. We're, we're funny. Ha ha. And stuff like that. Yeah, bye. Good day. But we're still recording because they can see us right now. I know, Jonathan. So look, they can see you. They can't see me anymore.